Good evening. Welcome to the September 26th regular school board meeting of the York County School Board. This is our first regular meeting of the new school year, and we are off to a terrific start. A little wet, but uh, off to a good start. I'm going to start this evening uh, speaking a few words about our pledge leader this evening. Riley, would you like to come on up while I do that? Riley Jones is a fourth grader at Seaford Elementary. She is the daughter of Jonathan and Melissa Jones. She is smart, friendly, and outgoing with a humorous attitude. She is a great friend to her peers and a sweet little sister to her big sister, Reagan. Riley is currently the corresponding secretary for the Seaford Elementary SCA. She is in her second year cheering for the Seaford Bulldogs and also plays soccer. Riley attends Water's Edge Church. This summer, she was able to participate in a church project where she donated a day of her time to help spruce up Tab Middle School. She cleaned bleachers, pulled weeds, and even painted. She ended her summer by attending Vems Bay, Bay Buddies Camp, and she has a new love for marine science. Riley is a good citizen of Seaford Elementary and does an outstanding job in all of her subjects, earning honor roll every quarter last school year. Seaford Elementary is proud to have Riley Jones lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Riley. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Riley. Okay, we're going to start our evening out with recognitions and awards, and we're going to start with the seniors of the month. And I believe, Ms. Haywood, you have our first senior of the month. I do indeed. Good ev evening, everyone. I would like to introduce you to the September senior of the month from Bruton High School, Elizabeth DeJager. De would you stand, Elizabeth? DeJager, did I say it correctly? Okay. Mom, Dad, who else is here with you? Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. You'll see yourselves on TV the next time it runs again. Let me share some information with you about Elizabeth. Elizabeth's drive and determination are significant factors in her success. You all can remain standing with her. <laughs> Elizabeth's intrinsic motivation allows her to create a vision of excellence. She then follows through by working diligently to achieve success without settling for mediocrity. Elizabeth is the founding member of the Williamsburg Boat Club's high school team. During the founding year, she won the Novice Women's Championship Award. At Bruton, Elizabeth participates in the debate team, French Honor Society, National Honor Society, <clears throat> Girls Soccer, and the Bruton Swim Team. In the community, Elizabeth participates in the York County Youth Commission, Queens Lake Swim Team, Community Lifeguard, and Youth Group. Elizabeth has received numerous awards over the past three years. H-O-B-Y Youth Leadership Delegate was H-O-B-Y. Oh, like okay, okay, take your word for it. <laughs> Academic High School Honors Award in grades nine through 11. Most Outstanding French II student, Most Outstanding AP Physics students, PTA Reflections winner, and the 2016 New Voices Playwright winner. Elizabeth is most proud of the opportunity that she has had this summer to produce her own play. This experience has provided her tremendous insight and into a new literary modalities that she will use to motivate and influence the world. Congratulations, and please join me in congratulating Elizabeth DeJager from Bruton High School. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Medford. I have the pleasure of introducing our September Senior of the Month for Grafton High School. That's Alan Matthew Grant. If you can stand, please. I believe your mom and dad's with you, if they can stand with you. Grafton High School is pleased to recognize Alan Grant as its September Senior of the Month. Alan has been a very active member of the Grafton Student Council Association. This year, he's the president of the association, and last year, he served as the corresponding secretary. 
He is also a member of the National Honor Society, Mu Alpha Theta Math Honor Society, Tri M Music Honor Society, and the Odyssey of the Mind team. In addition, he has consistently earned highest academic honors during his years at Grafton High School. Allen is also a member of the award-winning Grafton High School Marching Band, where he has served as a tenor saxophone sectional leader for the past two years. He is a member of the Grafton High School swim team and is an avid triathlete participating in regional and state competitions. In the community, Allen has volunteered at the Tab Library since eighth grade. He also serves as an usher at his church, works with pennies for patients, the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and assists the Red Cross with blood drives. As active as he is, Allen is still able to maintain a 4.2 GPA and hopes to attend VMI or the U.S. Military Academy next fall. Please join me in congratulating Allen as Grafton Senior of the Month for September. Good job. Okay, our next Senior of the Month is from Tab High School, and that is Melissa Zhu. Melissa, you know, your mom and dad, you know you have to stand up the entire time, so <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> Melissa Zhu is an outstanding example of a Tab High School student. She is the young lady that can always be counted on when anything needs to be accomplished. Academically, Melissa has never earned a final grade less than an A, and she has completed 10 advanced placement courses through her junior year. As a senior, she is adding four more to that list. Melissa has earned a cumulative GPA of 4.7142 through the end of her junior year. Melissa is a member of four honor societies at TAB, English, Beta, Club, Music, and the National Honor Society. She is also a three-year member of the Key Club. As an athlete, Melissa is a state champion swimmer, placing first in the 200-yard butterfly in 2014 and second in the same race in 2015. In the community, Melissa volunteers with the Salvation Army, Special Olympics, and the Big Brother Big Sister organization. She also devotes her time to the Virginia Living Museum. Melissa sings with her church praise team and plays piano for church services as well. She is an award-winning pianist, both as a state competition winner for the Piano Music Teachers Association and being selected to play at Carnegie Hall in the summer of 2016. Melissa is a true example of a Tab Tiger, both at school and in the community. Congratulations, Melissa. You make us proud. <laughs> and Ms. Kursky. It is my honor to present the York Senior of the Month for September, Elizabeth Irwin. She is here with her parents, Erin and Stephen, and her grandparents who have come in from Delaware for this right. special night. I have known this family for so many years since this young lady was a kindergarten student. So I share in their pride tonight and I can attest to all the wonderful things written about her. Intelligent, passionate, caring, and discerning are adjectives that come to mind when asked to describe Elizabeth Irwin. She dedicates herself wholeheartedly to every task placed before her and she gives her time and resources to numerous volunteer projects, regardless of how hectic her schedule. Elizabeth is a mature, goal-oriented, and driven young scholar. She is the kind of student a teacher loves having in the classroom, the kind of athlete a coach dreams of having on the team. With a 4.69 GPA, she has participated in a highly demanding academic program with optimal success. As a result of her significant academic achievements, Elizabeth has been inducted into the National Honor Society, the Spanish Honor Society, and she has received highest academic honors for the past three years. When considering such an outstanding academic record, one might assume Elizabeth's time is devoted solely to her studies. However, nothing could be further from the truth. Despite the rigorous demands of her coursework, she participates in Key Club, Spanish Club, the Student Council Association's Advisory Board, and she is currently serving her second term as class president. As a member of York High's swim and lacrosse teams, 
Elizabeth demonstrates effective leadership skills and serves as a positive role model for her teammates. Elizabeth Irwin exemplifies the York Falcon spirit, and we are so very proud to have her represent York High School as Student of the Month. Congratulations. Okay, at this time we're going to move into our Student Service Awards. Dr. Shannard is going to go down front, and Mr. Mathis, I believe you have our first award this evening. Yes. It's uh, indeed a pleasure uh, for Grafton High School to announce uh, Ms. Jalen Banks as the Student Service Award winner. Uh, you, Jalen? <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> And the uh, and do we have a Mr. Hart. We give her a round of applause. Jalen has excelled academically while at Grafton. She is the co-founder and president of the Philosophy Club. She is also a member of the National Honor Society, the French Honor Society, the Math Honor Society, Mu Alpha Theta, and Model UN. During her time at Grafton High School, Jalen has contributed countless hours of service to many school and community-related organizations. Jalen's award and honors include AXO Award recipient for the 10th and 11th grades and highest academic honors each year at Grafton. She volunteers at the Yorktown Victory Center and she serves as a student aide and tutor for students needing assistance. Jalen maintains a, a 4.5 GPA and is ranked in the top 5% of her class. She has been an asset to the Grafton High School and will continue to be an asset at whatever university she chooses to attend next fall. Grafton High School is proud to have such an involved student to represent the school and the community. Congratulations. <laughs> and Mr. Medford. Okay, Wes. Um, Wes Pack, if you could come up here, please. Yes, and your principal, Christina Head, from Seaford Elementary School. Oh, Wes Pack is a fifth grade student at Seaford Elementary. Wes is active in Seaford's Junior Monarch and Moore Club. Wes has been on honor roll since uh, for last school year. At five, Wes was diagnosed with stage four neuroblastoma. MoMA, I think I said that, right? A form of pediatric cancer. For five years, Wes has been fighting this disease and has relapsed four times. He continues chemotherapy, but his spirit positively and his smile has not changed. After Wes was diagnosed, Wes pulled toys out of his own toy box. Wes wanted to give his toys to his friends at the hospital. He started a toy drive for the for the oncology patients at CHKT KD called Wes Wish, piles of smiles for a child with cancer toy drive. Each year it grows larger and now provides Christmas for the patients, siblings, and parents. Many York County schools joined in and helped stuff the bus for Wes. Wes goes to schools and help collect the toys. He helps load the U-Haul and hand deliver the toys to the children at CHKD. Last year, $20,000 worth of toys and gift cards were collected. Wes also collects soda tabs and takes them to New York City to donate them to the Ronald McDonald House, which is his home away from home. Wes has, ins Wes has inspired Seaford Elementary students to join in and collectively they have been able to donate more than 100 pounds of soda tabs. September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. You can see that we all have our ribbons on and mm -hmm. I found the goldest tie I could find in my um, collection. And um, Wes, along with his family, actively spreads awareness and encourages others to wear gold this month. Wes inspires, inspired his family to start a 501c3 nonprofit foundation called United in Grace that helps families battling this disease. Wes is a deserving student of the Student Service, student, the York County Student Service Award. Wes, I got through that. Congratulations, <laughs> dude. You make a good, what can you say?
Well, I think we can just go home now. <laughs> okay, at this time we're going to move into our Community Volunteers of the Month. Ms. Kersky, I believe you are. Yes. It is my pleasure to announce the Volunteer of the Month from Grafton High School is Mrs. Tricia O'Grady. Would you please come forward along with the Grafton Principal, Mr. Royce Hart. Well, simply put, Mrs. Tricia O'Grady is a wonderful person, a person who is committed to helping students and teachers at Grafton High School. Mrs. O'Grady truly makes a difference in our school and community. Through her enthusiasm, organization, and dedication as volunteer coordinator for the PTSA and the Athletic Booster Club the past two years, Mrs. O'Grady has worked tirelessly to increase the level of parent involvement in both associations. Mrs. O'Grady leads by example and can be seen regularly working the concession stand at home volleyball games with her daughter, Lisa, who is a member of the team. Whenever called upon to assist, there is not a moment of hesitation. She has always been willing to go above and beyond to aid the cause no matter how big or small the request. We are indebted to Mrs. O'Grady for her service to Grafton High School. Without question, Grafton is a better place because of her support and involvement. Please join me in congratulating and thanking Mrs. O'Grady for her many dedicated hours as a volunteer. And Mrs. Haywood. And I have the honor of presenting Mrs. Carrie Snyder as the Volunteer of the Month for September from Seaford Elementary School. If Mrs. Snyder will come forward with our Principal Christina Head. <laughs> Carrie is the mother of three children and the wife of Dana Snyder. She has been a parent and an active member of the Seaford Elementary School for 11 years. Mrs. Snyder has enjoyed being room mother to her boys' classes for each of the 11 years. She has been, even been room mother for other teachers who didn't have one. Mrs. Snyder has been extremely active with the PTA of Seaford Elementary. She was elected to the board in several different positions and held many chair positions. She has held, she has held the board position of PTA treasurer for seven years and was the PTA president, president last school year. Mrs. Snyder was the chair of the PTA fundraising committee for two years. She started a very successful fundraiser called the Walkathon that raised over $20,000 for our school PTA. This has continued for the last three years and continues to flourish. Mrs. Snyder also coordinated the school carnival for the over five years. In addition, Mrs. Snyder realized the PTA storage shed needed significant renovations. She organized for a local home builder to completely refurbish the PTA shed at no cost. Mrs. Snyder's youngest son has moved on to sixth grade at Yorktown Middle School. She has continued to serve Seaford Elementary by training the new PTA board throughout the summer and assisting them with their August and September PTA events. Seaford Elementary is proud to honor Mrs. Snyder with the Volunteer of the Month recognition. She has been a true asset to our school. Please join me in congratulating, congratulating Mrs. Carrie Snyder. Okay, Ms. Kirschke, could I ask you to share a few comments regarding the York Foundation for Public mm -hmm. Education? Well, first I would like to invite uh, Seaford Elementary School Principal Christina Head and York Foundation for Public Education board member to come back along with Riley Jones, Wes Pack, Jalen Banks, Elizabeth DeJager, Alan Matthew Grant, Melissa Zhu, and Elizabeth Irwin. The York Foundation would like to congratulate Riley Jones, a fourth grade student at Seaford Elementary for doing a brilliant job reciting the Pledge of Allegiance at tonight's board meeting. And we would like to recognize tonight's Student Service Award recipients, Wes Pack, 
a student at Seaford Elementary, and Jalen Banks, a student at Grafton High School. Along with our Students of the Month, Elizabeth DeJager from Bruton, Alan Matthew Grant from Grafton, Melissa Zhu from Tab, and Elizabeth Irwin from York High School. Special gifts from Cookie Text and Edible Tweet are being presented on behalf of the York Foundation for Public Education and in partnership with its donor, Jeannie Fioka of Cookie Text and Edible Tweet. Congratulations, we are so very proud of you all. Dr. Shander, would you like to introduce this evening's Accent on Academics, please? Absolutely. Good evening, board members. For this evening's Accent on Academics, we have Waller Mill Elementary School, Fine Arts Magnet, and they're going to present the Great Kindness Challenge, a school-wide initiative elementary schools across the division participate in annually. This program fosters compassion in our school communities and is led by the elementary school counseling team who are here this evening. Um, tonight, Waller Mill students will showcase events from their school so it's my privilege to introduce Waller Mills principal, Ms. Jennifer Goodwin, and is now, she is now going to introduce our presenters. Good evening, School Board Chair, Dr. George, members of the board, Dr. Shandor. Before we begin our presentation this evening, I just have to take a moment to share gratitude for some valuable members of our YCSD team. It seems fitting tonight that we're here to talk about kindness because I've seen some true examples of kindness um, with our school in the last few weeks. In, more, in barely more than 24 hours, we were able to transform our school from a construction site into a beautiful, welcoming school for our students. I would have never been able to do this without many people. <clears throat> I first have to thank our teachers and staff for their incredible can-do positive attitude and Mr. Mark Shearhart for all of his support and dedication and long, long days spent at Waller Mill. Also, George Lynch, Floyd Davis, and all the members of our custodial team who worked their day jobs and then came to Waller Mill for countless hours and weekends. Also, members of our executive leadership team, Dr. Shandor, Dr. James, Dr. Carroll, Dr. Guy, my director, Mrs. Skinner, Catherine Goff, Cheryl Parr, even other assistant principals from around the division. When we say Team YCSD now, I'll always think of this experience. I will think of them coming in Labor Day weekend, working until almost midnight and all day the next to help us, unloading furniture, moving hundreds of boxes, delivering textbooks, building furniture, helping teachers set up their classrooms, moving chairs, moving more chairs, <laughs> picking up trash, cleaning rooms, waxing floors, <laughs> And yes, Dr. Shandor even mowed the grass <laughs> and smiling the whole time. There was nothing more that they wouldn't do. Thank you. You will never know what their support has meant to all of us and to me. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to share our experiences with the Great Kindness Challenge. In an effort to lead positive climates in our school communities, all York County School elementary schools, excuse me, participate in the Great Kindness Challenge, a week devoted to performing as many random acts of kindness as possible during the month of January. As an extension to the standards that school counselors address in regards to bullying prevention, the Great Kindness Challenge serves as an additional way schools are spreading the message of kindness and inclusion. This evening, we will highlight the exceptional programs which has stemmed from this initiative and shine light on the wonderful connections that we've made with our very own school division and beyond. I would like to introduce you to Gabriella Townsend and Meadow Kinney, two incredible student leaders at Waller Mill, 
who model compassion and academic achievement, and Mrs. Gaylord, the Waller Mill School Counselor and the lead elementary counselor for the division. Hello, my name is Gabriella Townsend and it's a pleasure to have the opportunity to share about our Great Kindness Challenge endeavors this evening. The Great Kindness Challenge originated in 2012 as a way for schools across the country to positively challenge students to be thoughtful in their daily interactions with others. Provided to all students is a checklist of 50 acts of kindness, which then serves as a guide for students. School counselors collaborate with school leaders to create school-wide programs and lessons, which make a lasting impression on our school communities. At Waller Mill Elementary Fine, Art, Fine Arts Magnet, we choose to use the book Beautiful Hands by Catherine Atoshi to theme our activities during this special celebratory week. Our journey with Catherine Atoshi began several years ago as we first were introduced to our inspiring character building books, 0, 1, and 2, in the classroom. Never before have we found a book series that depicted so beautifully the message of standing up for others and the magical power behind being the one. In hopes of bringing her work to life at Waller Mill, we reached out to Ms. Satoshi and asked if, she would, and asked if she would Skype with our school family. Instead of a visit via technology, Ms. Satoshi traveled from California to our school division, visiting Bethel Manor, Dare, Waller Mill, and Pocosin Elementary and primary schools in the spring of 2015. With the assistance of our talented art teacher, Mrs. Cove, our, our school family collaborated with Ms. Atoshi to create a wired frame bird with painted student handprints forming this beautiful piece of art, which now soars in our school library as a symbol of kindness and love for others. Meadow Kinney, my friend, will now share with you the various ways we integrated beautiful hands into our curriculum for our Great Kindness Challenge 2016. Good evening. My name is Meadow Kenny, and I'm a fourth grader at Royal Mill Elementary School. <laughs> In January of 2016, our student body embarked on a beautiful hands journey as we immersed ourselves in, in kindness practices. To begin, we listened to the Beautiful Hands Story, a book co-authored by Ms. Catherine Atoshi and Mr. Brett Baumgarten. The foundation of this book was based on Brett's experiences of holding his children's hands each morning and asking them the question, what will your beautiful hands do today? At the time, Brett was terminally ill with pancreatic cancer and wanted nothing more than to have his message of kindness and peace inspire children, and so his vision of co-authoring with Catherine became a reality. Friends and family were invited to attend a handprint party, and pages of wonderfully creative handprint designs emerged as a result of this lovely collaboration. Lucky for us, Mrs. Flannery, our school librarian, took the initiative to, to lead a discussion on beautiful hands and challenged students to reflect on ways they're already using their hands to spread kindness in their homes and school community. As an extension activity, students were encouraged to participate in the Kindness Matters, 50 Ways to Create a Kinder World Art Contest. Students were invited to write and illustrate a page for the Great Kindness Challenges published book. Fifth grade student Reagan Murphy created a piece of art titled Saying Thank Yous as Powerful as Saving the World. Reagan's piece was selected to be one of 50 pages showcased in this international book. What an accomplishment for a young writer and illustrator in the York County School Division to have her work shared around the globe, truly making her mark for readers everywhere. The fun didn't stop there. Grade Devils worked with their classroom teachers to present the Kindness Matters performances, which were filmed and then showcased at our student assembly. During music and PE dance classes, we earned a routine to the music of Adele and united as one school to display our beautiful hands, accentuated by black, white, by black lighting and white gloves. Finally, we heard from Kathy Natoshi herself as she sent a, graduate, a congratulatory video thanking us for spreading Brett's message of kindness in our everyday interactions with others. Whether it's giving a high five to a new friend on the buddy bench, writing a bucket note to a classmate, or holding open a book to discover a new idea, our hands surely make the world a brighter place to be. Beautiful Hands has a home in the Waller Mill Library and is also available in all YCSD elementary schools. Mrs. Gaylord will now speak to the division's successes in regards to the Great Kindness Challenge. Hi there, my name is Katie Gaylord and I am proud to represent Waller Mill and our elementary school counseling team. As I share with you the extraordinary ways our YCSD school communities have reached new heights in compassion. 
Each year, our counseling team sets aside a planning session devoted to the Great Kindness Challenge. We feel strongly that celebrating such a meaningful week is the drive our children need to be one step ahead in bullying prevention. I will now take a moment to highlight the incredible work our students, staff, and communities actively participated in during the Great Kindness Challenge 2016. Bethel Manor Elementary invited airmen volunteers to cheer on their students as they entered the building, forming a tunnel of heroes. According to Brittany Reed, school counselor, the smiles, high fives, and acts of kindness were priceless. Students in each grade level at Coventry Elementary voted on their favorite book and then donated these children's books to the Grafton Bethel Elementary Library. Mount Vernon was also on the receiving end of a book donation from Waller Mill, and this kindness between campuses was appreciated by students and faculty alike. Students at Magruder Elementary chose to start their week with a school-wide rainbow, showing the beautiful teamwork of a school community when kindness merges as one. Sydney Downs, school counselor at Seaford Elementary, listed her favorite part of the Great Kindness Challenge 2016 as how it extended beyond just her school building. As one of her fifth grade students took the initiative to surprise the local fire department with homemade treats. At Tab Elementary, school counselor Jennifer Richardson's news team enthusiastically promoted the GKC by greeting students at, as they got off the bus, even on the coldest of January mornings. Yorktown Elementary faculty exchanged Young Me treats with the Magruder staff and proved adults need just as much kindness as students. <laughs> At Dare Elementary, students kept track of their acts of kindness. Many students expressed the wish for the challenge to last all year. Led by school counselor Kristen Sarantakos, Grafton Bethel's SCA created a video of 20 things they wanted to say more often to their peers based on an uplifting kid, kid president excuse me, message. These ripples of kindness positively impact our school communities and serve to strengthen the academic, social, and emotional well-being of our children. We thank you for the opportunity to share with you tonight, and I want to thank our nine plus one, who's now a middle school counselor, who came tonight, our school counselors in the audience who came tonight, they dedicate they're 100% of their being to our kids in York County, and they just do a wonderful, wonderful job. So I wanted to thank them for being here tonight. And thank you for listening. We'd be happy to take any questions you may have. Well, I don't know. Well, first, let's have the nine plus one guidance <laughs> counselor stand up, um, if you would, please, if y'all will all, yes, absolutely. This um, is fantastic. I can. <laughs> I, I can say without even a smidgen of doubt that these um, counselors in the elementary schools they run just full blast, I mean, all day long. Their, their, their service to our children, the community, the families, the staff in that building, I mean, it just, I don't know how they do it, but they do a fabulous job in what they do. And to see this as an example of something that has gone in all 10 elementary schools and reflective of how to create a spark in students to really make a difference in what it really means to be out there in our community and family and buildings and around just doing the things that we all should be doing. And um, hats off to all of you. Thanks a bunch. I, I tell you, it's, it's, it's very heartwarming. I, I just, you know, I sit here and I just think about all the unpleasant things that are happening in the world today and uh, how people treat each other, um, adults treat each other. And perhaps some of those adults, you know, had some kindness training when they were in school. Perhaps they didn't. But um, this is where it starts. And there's an awful lot of uh, kids that may not get that at home. And thank goodness that we can provide that in school. We're expected to teach them how to do math and how to read, but kindness is a real plus. And uh, I just appreciate so much all that you're doing. Thank you. I just want to congratulate your two presenters. Mm -hmm. They were fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah.
And uh, as they, as the elementary students move from fifth to sixth grade, can we eventually move the program to middle school with them? Keep going. Yeah, roll it in. <laughs> Much as they can get. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Done. Okay, at this time the board will take a short recess to come down and meet tonight's award recipients. Welcome back. We're going to move into our business meeting this evening. Uh, unfinished business. I do not see any. Do, does anybody have any unfinished business? They like to bring them. Okay. Having none, uh, we'll move into presentations. The first one is our construction report. Dr. Shander, could you share information on that? Thank you. Yes, I'm going to ask Mr. Mark Shearhart, Associate Director of Capital Plans, to come and present this month's construction report. Mr. Shearhart? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Shandor, here's your capital projects report for the month of September. We'll focus on three different projects. The first of these will be Walla Mill. Walla Mill additions and renovations. Uh, this is a very familiar drawing. You've seen it before. The, I just wanted to refresh the public uh, where the, the staff and students are. They're, gonna, they're in the blue and the white areas of this drawing. The white areas are the renovated areas. The blue areas are the additions. The contractor is currently work in, working in the green area there. So the class has started on September 6th, as you know, in the additions in some of the renovated spaces. The contractor is continuing to work on a punch list for those areas, which are uh, places where caulk needs to be done or, or maybe some painting needs to be done. So the contractor is working on those punch list items now in the area where the students are after hours and on the weekends. The contractor is right now working in the uh, uh, left wing of the building. He's, replaced, he's installing new heating and air conditioning units and piping, and the white boards and attack boards have already been installed in the classrooms over there, and the painting is already underway. And they, that's the green area of the building, the left wing. So I, would have, I thought, I, because we're in the building now, I'd just give you a little bit of flashback before and after of where we're mm -hmm. at. The classroom wing addition, this is uh, last November. As we went through, and then the classrooms were prepared, casework was installed, and then we waxed the floors in preparation for the students moving in. The gymnasium wing, before there was just a plot of grass there, now we have a building, the art and, class, art and music classrooms in the front and the gymnasium in the back. This is almost done there, and this is what it looks like today inside the gymnasium. This is from a, one of the security cameras in there, courtesy of Russell Payne, to show you the floor that's installed in there. They will be painting this, the lines on the floor in the next couple of days. <clears throat> the front office expansion, this is what Seaford, I mean not Seaford, Walla Mill used to look like on the front. Looks like Seaford. And this is what it looks like now. So it's a dramatic change between the, what it used to look like and what it looks like now. More, much more modern looking building. It doesn't look 60 years old anymore. Then we had the library expansion. This is what the front of the library used to look like when we were getting ready to pour the f concrete floor there. And this is what the front of the library looks like now. So it looks a dramatic change, dramatic makeover on the building, mm -hmm. and uh, modernized the building a lot. Inside the library, it looks like this inside the expansion. So this is the uh, front part that was expanded on, and this is what it looks like in the whole library here. That opening in the center there is going to be for students. To, they can sit on cushions in that area when it's completely done and sit in a book nook, book nook and read books in there. So very beautiful very open and spacious library now. Existing cafeteria was a little bit dated. The uh, windows had been boarded up. And this is kind of what it looked like about halfway through the, uh, the renovation here. We had to take the ceiling out. And this is what it looks like now. So you can see the windows here on the left-hand side. Very open area and spacious now. Beautiful. Classrooms, this is what the, used, the classrooms used to look like. This is the carpet on the floors actually was in the classrooms. Uh, teachers now dress these all up. They had a lot of uh, very colorful things on the walls and to dress them up and make them look nicer. Uh, but this is when, what they look like now. This one, now this teacher has gone over the top a little bit, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, this is what the classrooms look like. Very bright, spacious, and airy now. It's just very welcoming. 
existing restrooms. This is what the, what the restrooms used to look like in there. This is, uh, obviously, we started a renovation here, taking the fixtures off the walls. Just to get you a feel of what it looks, used to look like, and this is what it looks like now. Wow. So dramatic change in what it was and what it looks like now. And so that's the last slide for Waller Mill Elementary School. So then Grafton Complex, which is on everybody's uh, mind here because we're having to rain tomorrow, potential rain tomorrow. Uh, the roof replacement and coating. The, uh, the contractor is close to completing roof tear off and replacement on the building. Obviously, he didn't do any today in preparations for tomorrow. The drain installations are complete. Uh, the owner of the company was actually out here look, checking them to make sure they were complete and not leaking. Uh, the contractor has started coating the entire roof. They have substantial completion. Is their anticipated uh, sub substantial completion date is November 30th. They should have all the, all the roof, roofing, work, roofing work done, the metal on, downspouts on, gutters on, and then they'll be finishing up doing the coating between then and the final completion date of December 30th. The last project I talk about this evening, or last school I'll discuss this evening, is Magruder Elementary, and this is a gym floor replacement. The entire floor was removed in this gym. It was actually two floors, one original poured floor, what they call a poured floor, and then we had the plastic interlocking tiles on top of that. Those, the, both of those floors were removed. A new floor was installed before school began so the school could use it, and then the punch list items were completed last Friday. And this is the process when they were uh, uh, sanding the floor, preparation for the floor, and this is what it looks like now. So it looks like a professional floor. And a, but it's in a uh, elementary school gym, and they're very excited about their new floor in the gymnasium. This again is courtesy of Russell Payne and the security cameras that we have installed in some of the school in, in the schools. That's my last slide for this evening. Do you have any questions for me? I have a comment. I wanted to thank Mr. Shearhart, Dr. James, and Dr. Shandor <clears throat> again for giving me a top to bottom tour of the Grafton complex last week. Um, even looking out on the roof. <laughs> Um, I know I received numerous calls when the roof started leaking again with last week's rain, and um, everyone was troubled and worried about, um, they knew the roof was being repaired, but then they saw the leaks coming, and it uh, was a little, um, I don't want to say pandemonium, but <laughs> I mean, it was a little crazy. Uh, we were worried. You guys gave me a wonderful tour and explained in detail what you, the staff and the contractor were doing around the clock to try to correct the problem. And I know most of the leaks are corrected, and I just want to um, express my appreciation for giving me that tour and explaining everything for an hour and a half and, uh, and for um, planning to provide updates to the community. I think that's very important because um, Without communication and transparency, rumors start to fly and, and they think the roof is about to collapse and it is not about to collapse at all. Uh, saying that, this issue is very complicated because while we had the roof replacement, we also have um, the HVAC units that need to be replaced probably sooner than FY19 as they also can overflow, get clogged up and overflow and cause <clears throat> leaks. So I just wanted, you know, to kind of let the board know that's on my agenda for next year when we talk about CIP is to see if we can find funding for the replacement of the HVAC unit at Grafton sooner than FY19. And thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, at this time we're going to move into our comments of citizens. We have three people signed up to speak, and if you did not sign up and you would like to speak, there will be a chance to do that at the end of the meeting. Just like to go over a few housekeeping items pertaining to the uh, comments of citizens. Comments should be addressed to the school board, not the audience. The board's goal for the public comment period is to hear your concerns, comments, and opinions. Board members will not respond to questions during the public comment period. If you request follow-up from the board, please leave that request along with your contact information in writing with the school board clerk. All comments should be made in a respectful manner. Individuals be ruled, will be ruled out of order if they attempt to comment about the conduct or performance of a specific employee by name and will be directed to address those concerns to the superintendent's office as personnel matter. 
Individuals will be, will be ruled out of order and asked to leave the meeting if they use any vulgar or profane language. The audience is also asked to be respectful and not engage in conduct that interferes with the ability of other individuals to watch the board meetings, interferes with the ability of other members of the public to offer comment to the board, or interferes with the ability of the board to conduct its business. Comments are limited to three minutes per speaker, and the public comment period at this point in the meeting is limited to 30 minutes total. When your name is called, approach the podium, speak into the microphone, give your full name and address. When one minute remains, you will see the yellow light at the podium. When the timer reaches three minutes, the red light will go on and the buzzer will sound. The board respectfully asks that you conclude your comments at that time. Thank you. Okay, the th three people uh, this evening. The first one is Tim Hamilton. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, um, your name well, and address, please. Tim Hamilton, 106 Olivia Court, Yorktown, Virginia, Thank 23692. Um, I was going to read a letter from my wife. Um, some of you might have heard a situation that involved my son. At, he was in a JROTC. He had found a purse. He was doing the right thing. He turned it in. At that point, one of the he heard over one of the students overheard one of the students tell the person who belonged to the purse that he he had it and he turned it in. That that student then told the instructor that her phone was missing. Um, before anybody could even get contacted, he didn't go to York High administration at all to determine or let them know what was going on. He called straight to his parents' school, which would be Grafton High School. Once he got, they got back to Grafton High School, they pulled him off the bus, took him out in front of everybody, took him into the school, um, took him into the guidance counselor and searched him. My son is autistic. He had no idea what was going on. The school never called us. And I, I have submitted a petition online to actually ask for a few of the rules, policies um, to be looked at in this situation. Um, first, the first policy that I'm asking is if there is an incident the teacher or the other official, as in JROTC instructor, um, vocad, any other officiating person conducting instruction at the school, that they notify, if there's any incident, they notify an administrator prior to anything. Because the incident happened at York High. York High had no idea of the incident. Um, if there's an incident, the teacher or the other official acting in such capacity, such as ROTC commanders, vocational instructors, or any other employee authorized to conduct training on York County School District property shall notify an administrator prior to any action being taken. My second policy I would like to look at is during such, in, during such incident, that the school administrator shall attempt to notify a parent prior to any searches being conducted. And my third, third one I am asking for is the student handbook also be changed. It, it needs to add, I would like it to add the search and seizure policy to include that student has a right to have his or her parent guardian, parent or guardian present during the such search. Can you pass that information on to uh, Ms. Goff? And we'll, I can. That would um, be, that would appreciate that. After hearing everything today, you know, you, you would think York County is a perfect school. I put this petition on one of the York County pages for a matter of a couple of days and Oh, I'm sorry, I'm over. 
just for a couple of days and their comments about bullying in, in the York County school districts. I've been in these schools for since my kids were going to school. And I, I've dealt with it with my kids. Mm -hmm. And they've been strong and they've been pushed through. They have dealt with some of the situations, but it, it doesn't seem like it's just a small thing. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you voicing your concerns and pass that on, please. Sam Yuri. Sam Yuri. 302 Penrith Crossing, Yorktown, Virginia, 23692, York Education Association President. On behalf of the York Education Association, we would like to thank the school board members who indulged us with uh, time over the summer as they were participating in their holidays and breaks as we discussed some of the major issues that were coming up. I would likely, uh, like to lightly touch on those uh, a little bit. I'd like to emphasize to you that this is a year for me and for my organization to really be representing the uh, education support personnel. We've been touted for our teachers and uh, how well they're paid and all that, and we want the other employee groups to have the same pride in terms of their pay, the operations, and their uh, expectations of advancement and everything else in our school division. Uh, we're all part of the team. We're all part of YCSD. We like to make sure we're able to keep the best and brightest with us as well in the other employee categories. Um, we have something called ESSA, which is the Every Student Succeeds Act. It was what followed on with no child, from No Child Left Behind. It's an excellent opportunity for us to establish with the state new accountability standards as it comes to what we have expectation-wise for our students. It couples very well with our profile for a graduate, which is what the state is doing, as well as the comprehensive high school tie-in to say this is what the schools need to look like to produce the graduates we want to have. Uh, we have an ex another excellent opportunity, which the board, I'm sure, is aware of, the standards of quality that the Board of Education has uh, recommended are very beneficial to the school divisions who have been footing the bill for uh, more of the burden education-wise than they should have. If uh, the Board of Education's recommendations get accepted and funded, we will all benefit from that because we have some staffing positions that will help us in providing the best quality circumstances for our students. Uh, we're talking about guidance counselors, additional guidance counselors, we're talking about potential uh, social workers, potential psychologists, and one of the biggest drawbacks on us was, and if we follow on with uh, my next person, is that they put a cap on the support personnel that could be in the schools. And if they eliminate that, that's a large number of assistants that we can get in our classrooms with each one of our teachers, where in the past we kind of cut that back to kind of stay within budget. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. <clears throat> and Savina Booth. Hi, my name is Savina Booth, 502 Robin Hood Drive, Yorktown, Virginia, 23693. Um, first of all, I want to thank you all for um, your service and your time, and that was an awesome little presentation that you just had with all those students. It's a really good, feel-good effort. I mean, um, I, I acknowledge and respect all the time and effort that you all put in um, to serve our schools, because that's what it is. It's, it's a service. And I've, I've seen you interact one-on-one -on -one with our Board of, of County Supervisors trying to do the best you can for our schools, and so I appreciate that. Um, I'm here advocating mostly for our students, but also for our support staff. I'm wearing my shirt because they told me to. It says an ESP, and a lot of people don't know what that is, but that's the education support uh, professionals. And on the back, it tells you all the stuff that we do. Um, so I'm talking about our bus drivers, our cafeteria workers, our custodians, our paraeducators. These are the people that are on the bottom half of the pay scales that earn very little, that are very dedicated, um, and work very hard to make our schools really good places to learn and work, and your county a great place to live. Because our schools, as we all know, are what draw people to come to our, to our county. Um, so it, my effort here is, I got hired about five years ago, 
And since that time, they kept telling me, we're going to look at the pay scales, we're going to look at the pay scales. And I realize we've been in uh, difficult um, times, but this time around, can, can you guys look at the pay scales um, to help maybe help those people that um, single, single parents, we have a lot of them work in our schools that really can't make ends meet, um, they're on welfare or um, get food stamps and supplemental income. Um, if we could just help them a little, um, a little goes a long way. Um, when your raise is, is really small. Um, so it would be a good show of faith that, hey, we really do appreciate what you do and, and um, uh, we'd like to keep you one of the York County goals. It's uh, one of the mission statements is that to recruit, hire, retain, and support a diverse staff that meets our highest standards. Um, I think that we just need to continue to make efforts to retain some of those people in my years, in my classroom in specific, the multiple disabilities classroom, we've lost more than six paraeducators just due to the salary. It's a hard job and pays very little. And I know there are paraeducators all over the county that do hard work dealing with all sorts of stuff. Um, our bus drivers, our custodians, same, same kind of deal. So um, I thank you for your time and your support and for the excellent job that you all do. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we're going to move into our matters by board, um, board members. I'm going to just start out with just a few brief comments, and then I'm going to mix it up a little bit and let you guys sort of come down the road in the way that you feel led to do. How's that? I think we're going to start with Todd. But uh, just to touch, um, Savina was talking about, you know, budget and the Board of Supervisors. I mean, we're, we're, we're off to the races here. Um, and we've already reached out to the uh, uh, county administrator, Chairman of the Board of Supervisors, and have made that contact and have started initiating our our discussions. So we want to get a nice early start, and that's indeed what we're what we're doing. Um, you know, it, it it yet it still remains to be seen what the state's going to do, and certainly it's too early for that. But uh, we are working on it, and we are ready for. What's the word I want? Not battle. We want to, don't want to say that. We're ready for some 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 good, uh, positive conversations with them. So uh, looking forward to good things this year. Um, over the past couple of weeks, I think you probably have been able to see uh, sort of this 2015-16 snapshot that Catherine uh, put together for us so graciously here, and um, it's something we're very proud of. Uh, and I don't want anybody to think for a moment that we sort of rest on our laurels too much and say, hey, we've arrived and this is it. It's not that at all. But we like to celebrate some successes and then continue to push forward. So I'm just going to let y'all maybe go down the row here and you take a couple of these and uh, comment for a few moments on that if you'd like. Doc? Uh, before we get started, and if you don't mind, I would like to sure. uh, uh, say I really appreciate uh, Principal uh, Butler, Shannon Butler. I visited uh, her in her school. Uh, the last couple of weeks now, we had a great uh, conversation for about an hour and a half. Talked about the building, the plumbing. Uh, it rained there, uh, not nearly as hard as it did end up raining, but a good amount. Uh, talked about academics uh, and just goals set for the year and the uh, general field of uh, the uh, school and that real positive uh, uh, meeting with her. It was a great meeting, and I am excited about what's happening down there at uh, York High School. And uh, uh, One thing I did make a comment on, she agreed, is that the parking there, uh, for uh, the students' uh, parents and uh, visitors is uh, very lacking. Students are no problem, but uh, that, that, this, this a tough parking situation there. People double park there a lot, so there's a lot of grass out in the front. Maybe something could be done with that, but um, anyways, it was a good meeting. Uh, really appreciated it. Uh, as far as the middle schools go, and uh, uh, attaining uh, standards and getting graded by the uh, state. Uh, all of the schools in York County really knocked it out of the park. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the middle school ones. Uh, Tab Middle School and uh, York Middle School, they met or exceeded all 18 of uh, the, the targets that were set by the state, uh, which is great. Uh, Grafton Middle School and Tab also had pass rates that exceeded 90% out of three out of the four uh, content areas, you know, the, your history, your math, your science type thing. So outstanding with that. 
<laughs> also, uh, students with disability, they had a uh, math growth in there from anywhere from 5% to 15% year over year, so that's shown some great improvement in that, and that's, that's exciting that uh, we're, we're hitting that group. And uh, the Hispanic uh, uh, students' reading growth uh, for all four middle schools uh, ranged from 4 to 14% year over year increases in mastering the language, and that's, uh, that's some really good news out of that, and I was really proud of the middle schools for, uh, for what they did. And I'm going to jump into that in one second, but one thing I want to mention before jumping to the um, elementary school, um, some of the things we can very, be, really be proud of is, I don't know if y'all open up and read, I'm sure you do, the Phoenix Files. It's the York River Academy newsletter they send out. And I love these things when they come out. They just are, I mean, some of the students I want to mention, uh, Jason Thompson, um, and Seth uh, Simon, Christopher Alberg, um, Patrick Carey, um, Carson Kelly, and let's see, there was, I believe, um, maybe one more. But these students, along with their teacher, um, Ms. Norton, I believe, just really um, put a lot of information into this document that not only the students can enjoy looking through, but the business community can enjoy looking through, a family or a parent can enjoy looking through, and they, they jump beyond the school building, um, like Apple versus Android. It was pretty interesting to see what students prefer as an operating system for their smart device. Um, a recipe that I look forward to cooking a cheesy hash brown casserole here soon. Um, gaming reviews. And, but one last thing I want to mention is when they interview their, some of their teachers. And who would know that Mr. Carpenter owned a business selling parts for Mustangs before he became a teacher? I had no clue. And then one of his favorites is a 1968 Shelby, but uh, GT350. But if he had one to own a, a car of his dream, it'd be a 1966 AC Cobra with a 427. You can imagine how fast that thing would go down the road. Good thing he's a teacher now. But um, he decided that teaching was his passion when he left his business and been at York River Academy since 2002. Just a really cool document um, that YRA really puts out. And I know other schools do the same thing with their newsletters, but YRA, they just really rock it when they do something. They don't, they don't hold back. They really make a difference, which is probably why we see some of the successes that we're celebrating again tonight to highlight. Like in elementary schools, and I know um, this, we're going a little off, a little bit more data than what's on the screen behind me. But in the elementary school, seven out of 10 schools pass rates were in the 90s um, in all four content areas. Nine out of the 10 schools improved math um, from the previous year. We have nine out of 10 of our schools had double digit growth in reading from grade three from FY14 to grade five and FY16. I mean, double digit gains in reading. Um, Coventry knocked it out of the park with growth um, in, in their subgroups. Um, Bethel Manor was a national Title I distinguished school um, and a Virginia Title I highly distinguished school. Dare Elementary School got the Virginia Title I distinguished school. Walla Mill had a pass rate of a 100% for fifth grade reading and fifth grade history. And it just goes on and on some of the things that our community can look at and if they ever pull that budget document and really dive into where the dollars are spent, this is the reason we do what we do because this shows this you know proof in the pudding kind of thing that our teachers our staff our support staff everyone that wraps around um, the decisions we make as a board this is the result so um, hats off to the elementary schools they, they rock it thank you Mark. I'm gonna follow with high school uh, we have had a wonderful accomplishments at the high school level 92 percent plus uh, passed uh, English pass rate for all five high schools. That's outstanding. Four of the five high schools met or exceeded all 27 targets. Um, all five high schools des were designated WISE organization, the Blue Star School for Financial Literacy. All five high schools um, had a pass rate for English and math, showed an English and math growth rate between 81 and 96%. Three of, 
Three of the five, Grafton High School, Tab High School, and York High School, are State Board of Education Distinguished Award schools. We have so much to be proud of here in York County, but we still have work to do. And I'm going to agree with Dr. Um, George. George. Put your name. <laughs> <laughs> I want to uh, agree with Dr. George that we can't sit on our laurels. We have. Uh, we had a presentation by the leadership team uh, at our last work session. And when you dive into the specifics, there are some areas that we need to work on. And uh, we were assured that those will be areas that we work on. But we do want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to all people involved, from the principal to the teacher to the cafeteria workers who feed the kids, to the bus drivers to getting them to school, to everybody for, for all of their hard work in and we all celebrate these accomplishments. So now the challenge is how do we maintain what we have and improve it? Uh, we owe that to all of our students, to our youth, um, at all three levels, elementary, middle, and high. Uh, if I could end my comments with uh, to Mr. Yur, yes, thank you all. Thank the YEA for the summative report of their survey, good reading material. And so as we move into this budget time and working with everybody involved and in how can we accomplish much for our students. And lastly, one of the presenters talked about bullying. And this board is very serious about bullying. One of the action items tonight is a um, proclamation for Bullying Prevention Awareness Month for October. So that's something we'll look at as we move into those action items. Dr. George. Thank you. Ms. Kershke, would you like to finish up this? Evening? I would. Wow. We have had a remarkable year. And I believe that we're off to an even greater start for the 2016-17 year. And I can't wait to, to go over the results in a year for what the teachers, students, staff, everyone involved in the educational process in York County, what they can accomplish this year. I want to spotlight one of our teachers. And you, this is probably the first school board meeting she hasn't attended. <laughs> so I've asked Catherine Goff to find her picture on uh, the YCSD website. Carol Bauer, is one of five teachers in the nation to receive the Horace Mann Award for Teaching Excellence. Mrs. Bauer is a beloved fourth grade teacher at Grafton Bethel Elementary School and she is most deserving of this award and recognition. The president of the National Education Association says that Mrs. Bauer was selected by her peers for attaining the highest teaching standards as shown by her exemplary instruction, professional advocacy and leadership, attention to diversity and community outreach. We are so very proud of Carol Bauer. We know that she is an outstanding teacher and we are excited that the rest of the country knows she is as well. Let's congratulate her on this tremendous award and for always serving as a role model. And I have one little reminder from the York Foundation for Public Education. Teachers, the deadline for applications for the Fall Innovative Grant is October 13th. Up to $1,000 will be awarded for an individual innovative instructional grant and consideration will also be given to grants which directly support the current division initiative. So I encourage you all take advantage when there's money being offered, take advantage and apply for these grants. Mm -hmm. You can find more information on the York County School Division website under the York Foundation for Public Education. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kirchner. Okay, at this time we're going to move into our financial matters. And Ms. Haywood, you have that for us this evening. I have that for you this evening. There are three categories. The first is a certificate for approval of claims. This uh, covers the area of the dates of August the 4th to August the 31st in the amount of $4,329,423.80.
as you move to the second page of that document, there are some areas that I would like to highlight and talk about. When with, with respect to remote learner net, Moodle support and additional storage. This is our online support program. Uh, lesson plans may be completed and available for staff online, and that's in the amount of $12,600. Right under that, in the amount of $14,811.98, BSN Sports Incorporated. This is the York High School pole vault, pit, and base protective pads. Uh, this was replacement due to storm damage. Um, again, it's replacement is more cost effective to replace than to repair. Next down, Blackboard Inc. in the amount of $33,934.13. That's for the Connect K-12. Uh, it's the phone notification system and it's for one year for the amount. Farther down the page, more than halfway, is Blackboard Inc. again in the amount of $20,922.20. That's Edline. That's our website cost for one year. And all of, that, all of our schools are online. Right under that is WHRO. This is our annual assessment for WHRO in the amount of $25,044. Closer to the end, I just want to say thanks again. We have Mary Immaculate Hospital Athletic Training Services. This is always a plus for the safety of our athletes in the amount of $24,274. Lastly, on this page, the amount of $10,700 to Cherry Beckert, that's for food service. If you would go with me to the second page, uh, we've, we've heard a lot about Walla Mill. There are three items on this page for Walla Mill Elementary. Second from the top, the $34,959.65. That's payment towards the additions and renovations. Towards the end of the page, uh, a large amount, $665,938.19 to Oyster Point Construction. And right under that, RRMM Architects for the A&E services for the Walla Mill additions and renovations. Those three amounts total $717,945.24. Uh, one nice plug next to the bottom, security doors at York High School main entrance. We're always concerned about safety in our schools and that's an upgrade for, um, for that school in the amount of $26,119.66. Lastly, we've talked about um, Grafton High School and the leaking. That $924,729.90 goes to uh, Roof Services Corporation for partial roof replacement and coating. Um, off to a leaky start, but we surely hope and, and, and soon <laughs> that we can finalize, ha finally have a year where we don't hear about rain in that school. Here, here. Hear, here. <laughs> <laughs> the second part is consideration of approvals for financial reports. If you look at your operating bu um, budget for August 2016, this is still, this, this is very early on. It's the second month of the fiscal year. We have uh, collected only 48% of revenue at this point. We have spent uh, very little only 10% um, in this fiscal year. Remember that new teacher contracts don't start until September. Expenditures to date are very close to uh, last year of 2015. And lastly, keep in mind that um, this year we'll see a decrease in federal income. We received uh, federal impact aid last year, but we will not receive it this coming year. If you will look at your food service, again, this is August, uh, school had not started, um, percent income was zero, it's very little, and the expenditures um, were at 47%. Uh, 
um, that $18,688.33 of expenditures was to um, include freezer and refrigerator stock up for the uh, beginning of the school year. I move now to your third category, the consideration of approval of resolution 16-65, a resolution authorizing specific procurement. And again, it involves the expenditure of 50,000 or more individually that we have to go through these areas. We're finally replenishing buses into our fleet. This um, procurement list has six. Um, and there are four of the six with air conditioning. Uh, and, and when I ask uh, how many in that fleet that we already have with air conditioning, it's very few, if any, and those will be used for special education needs. But there will be four uh, buses with air conditioning uh, that will be purchased, um, and they will be used primarily for distance trips, long distance trips. And again, it's wonderful to be able to replenish our fleet. Um, there is an A&E services for Bethel Manor Elementary and York Elementary. The York Elementary is the roof HVAC and expanding the cafeteria. The Bethel Manor uh, is to uh, take place next summer is to renovate the 300 and the 400 walls, halls. We hope that the idea is that these will happen and be summer work. So hopefully we can get the, uh, the money in place and the bids and all that goes into this so that the moment school stops, we can move in, do what we need to do, and when school opens, we're out of there. That's, that's the goal. Um, the last thing, the last two, the trailer rental for 10 months at York Elementary and Magruder Elementary, that amount, that $110,888 for rentals. <clears throat> and next year, these units are still gonna be in place, so next year, you're gonna get another rental agreement. Um, and the installation uh, of making sure those, whether you call them trailers, modular units, or learning cottages. They have to have all up-to-date electrical waste, water, and utilities, and that amount estimated $338,246 for those units at both of those schools. And with that, I move approval of financial matters. Do I have a second? Second. Any questions? Ms. Ford? A motion is made by Mrs. Haywood and seconded by Mrs. Kurski to approve financial matters. Mrs. Kurski? Yes. Mr. Mathis? Yes. Mrs. Haywood? Yes. Mr. Medford? Yes. And Dr. George? Yes. This time we have two items on consent calendar. Does anybody need to pull any items from the consent calendar? No. We have approval of personnel actions and approval of donations in the amount of $2,315.47. Uh, could somebody move the approval, please? Move approval. Second. Mrs. Ford? A motion is made by Mr. Medford and seconded by Mrs. Haywood to approve the consent calendar. Mrs. Haywood? Yes. Mr. Mathis? Yes. Mr. Medford? Yes. Mrs. Kurski? Yes. Dr. George? Yes. We have six action items this evening. The first one I'm going to ask Dr. Shander to share comments about. Thank you, Dr. George and board members. Um, Proclamation of Bullying Prevention Awareness Month, October 2016. Um, bullying affects almost 30% of the youth in our country each year. It can take it could take place in many forms, including verbal and physical, and most recently in cyberspace, and can happen in many places on and off school grounds. It is important for parents, students, teachers, coaches, and school administrators to be aware of bullying and to encourage discussion of the problem as a school community. Let the month of October 2016 be recognized as Bullying Prevention Month in all your county schools with the intention that the issue of bullying and its prevention be discussed in all your county schools during this time. Thank you. I need a motion to move the approval for the Proclamation for Bullying Prevention Awareness Month. I move approval. Second, please. I second. Ms. Ford. A motion is made by Mrs. Kurski and seconded by Mr. Mathis to approve the Proclamation for Bullying Prevention Awareness Month. Mrs. Kurski? Yes. Mr. Mathis? Yes. Mr. Medford? Yes. Mrs. Haywood? Yes. And Dr. George? Yes. Thank you. Next, we have approval of minutes from a special meeting on June 13th, 2016. 
2016, Mrs. Haywood and Ms. Kirschke were both absent and will have to abstain. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes from the special meeting on June 30th, 2016? I move to approve the minutes of that meeting. Second. Thank you. Ms. Ford? A motion is made by Mr. Mathis and seconded by Mr. Medford to approve the minutes. Mr. Medford? Yes. Mr. Mathis? Yes. Mrs. Haywood? Abstain. Mrs. Kirschke? Abstain. And Dr. George? Yes. Next, we have an approval of minutes from a special meeting on August 15th, 2016. Dr. George and Mr. Medford were both absent and will have to abstain. I need a motion to approve the minutes from the special meeting, August 15th, 2016. Move approval. Second. Ms. Ford. A motion is made by Mrs. Haywood and seconded by Mrs. Korsky to approve the minutes. Mr. Medford? Thank you. Mr. Mathis? Yes. Mrs. Haywood? Yes. Mrs. Korsky? Yes. Dr. George? Abstain. Next, we have approval of minutes from a work session special meeting on September 12th, 2016. Dr. George was absent. I need a motion to approve minutes from a work session special meeting on September 12th, 2016. Move approval. Second. Ms. Ford? Yes. A motion is made by Mr. Medford and seconded by Mrs. Kursky to approve the minutes. Mrs. Haywood? Yes. Mr. Mathis? Abstain. Mr. Medford? Yes. Mrs. Kursky? Yes. And Dr. George? Abstain. And finally, we have approval of minutes from a special meeting on September 19th, 2016. Mr. Medford was absent. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes from a special meeting on September 19th, 2016? So moved. Second. Ms. Ford? A motion is made by Mr. Mathis and seconded by Mrs. Haywood to approve the minutes. Mr. Medford? Who was absent on the 19th? You were. <laughs> I'm Same. sorry. <laughs> Mr. Okay. Mathis? Yes. Mrs. Haywood? Yes. Mrs. Kursky? Yes. And Dr. George? Yes. <laughs> His computer shut down, I think. It's slow. It's it is slow. moving very slow. Okay, under policy discussion, we have none. First reading, we have none. Second reading, we have none. Brings us to the report of our hero, our superintendent, Dr. Shandor. Thank you, Dr. George, yes. board members. Um, the first thing I want to share this evening is I want to thank our public for their concerns. Uh, it does mean a great deal to us, uh, and I know it means a great deal to the board that the community does come and share their thoughts and concerns with us. So uh, I appreciate the folks who presented tonight, our YEA members who are in attendance, as well as uh, the parent who was here this evening, and I, I appreciate him leaving information um, for Ms. Ford. Um, second, I wanted to share, uh, I think I left this item off of the work session when I provided sort of an opening school report. Um, I gave a list of a number of different activities that we did through the summer. I did want to highlight uh, the Operations Institute. I believe I left that one off. Uh, the Operations Institute was an opportunity for all of our principals and administrators and assistant principals at our schools to participate in a lot in some professional development that Dr. James and uh, Catherine Jones, Dr. Jones, who's in the back, uh, provided for them. We had a lot of wonderful presentations. I wanted to share a little bit about some of those topics that we covered. Um, Ms. Economo was there. She provided a law briefing for all of our administrators. Um, we had several administrators present on family engagement, um, bullying prevention, attendance and truancy, which is an issue for, for all schools across the country, including ours, that we're going to continue to work on. We provide a lot of strategies in there to engage our parents, uh, to encourage and get our students to come to school. Uh, also, crisis management, uh, providing customer service, uh, and, in, and there were a number of topics, but also we really focused on the military child. So we provide a lot of training during that Operations Institute. So thank you to Dr. James and Dr. Jones for that, um, for providing that information, or providing those sessions for our staff members. Um, next, as we kick off the school year, many of our various groups are busy scheduling this year's activities. I want to share just a little bit about uh, a few events that I participated in the past two weeks. Um, I participated in the York Foundation for Public Education. Uh, they had that meeting last Thursday. Um, excited about the continued partnership between our school division and the foundation. Also want to thank Jim Noel, who did a great job leading the foundation for a number of years. Um, he's going to stay on in some sort of capacity, he assured us that evening. Um, but we certainly appreciate his leadership. And I certainly look forward to working with our new president, Carrie Dayton. Um, I also had the opportunity to, to meet with our PTA board. Um, we had a discussion this past week as well. They had the opportunity to share their plans with me regarding the, up, the upcoming school year, and we'll continue to strengthen our parent, student, and teacher connections. 
I had the opportunity to attend the fall regional social workers meeting, and I, I appreciate our social workers inviting me to kick off that event this past week. Had the opportunity to speak to a number, uh, actually over 50 social workers uh, this past week. Our social workers play such a vital role and supportive role in our school division. I certainly appreciate their dedication. Um, finally, just as a reminder, uh, we're finishing up our back to school nights. They're all underway. Uh, many of them have, comp have been completed already. This is a great opportunity for our families to connect with our teachers. Uh, this concludes the superintendent's report. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shander. Is there anybody that wishes to address the board that has not had an opportunity to do so? All right, just a reminder, our next work session is on October 10th at 6 o'clock downstairs. And I believe there's a little debate of some sort going on tonight on TV. So let's, everybody's got time to get home and, uh, and do that. So thank you and everybody have a great evening.